Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my low buy update for January. If you aren't aware, I'm doing a low buy for the first six months of the year. I did film a video talking about this, which I'm going to link in the cards up here if you want a bit more information as to why. But essentially it is just me budgeting ahead of our rather large scale home renovation, which will fingers crossed be coming soon. We're just waiting on our DA approval and then after that we should get our build date. So that'll be really exciting. But basically that's one of the main reasons I'm doing a low buy. Now I do just want to quickly apologize about the lighting. It is overcast and every now and then the sun peeks through. We have a storm coming later this week so um, lots of rain ahead which is why the weather is doing all sorts of things. But um, essentially what I want to do is split this video into sections or topics. So I want to start with the very specific triggers for me which drive my consumption in the months of January and February because when I look back on my purchases over the years I have noticed it there when I really tend to purchase and shop the most. Then I want to share with you what I bought in the month of January so this will be the things that were included as part of this low buy budget and then also just the other general things that I've bought this month in case that's of interest. Uh, then I want to talk through the gifted items that I've received um, and share those with you. Please let me know if you want me to not include this in future updates but I thought it would be good to just be really transparent and open about what has come into my life this month. And then I want to talk a little bit about kind of quiet luxury and also some of the things that I have been finding joy in this past month. So let's talk about kind of my shopping triggers for January and February. So for those of you who aren't aware, my mum passed away almost seven years ago now. Um, she had cancer and the time from when I found out that she was ill to when she passed away was incredibly short. So I didn't really have a lot of time to process the fact that she was sick. I found out she was ill in late January. I was able to go home and I spent my birthday weekend with her and that was the last time I ever got to see her. So it's part of the reason why I get quite emotional um, this time of year. And then she passed away two weeks later. So um, it's sort of something that I'm still continuing to deal with. If you have ever lost a parent, then you will know, or, or anyone who is really close to you really, um, you will know how challenging it can be when it comes up to those milestone anniversaries uh, every year. And I'm very aware that I'm an emotional shopper, so I try to suppress those emotions by buying things. Um, while I know buying things and spending money does not give you happiness, uh, it is a way for me to distract myself from what I'm actually feeling and I guess one of the things I kind of wanted to try and address with my low buy is those particular feelings of grief so that I can really move past this. It's always going to be something that I find very sad you know I wish every day that my mum was still here uh, but it's it's one of those things you know it happened and I really need to develop better tools to deal with it because spending money uh, and unnecessarily purchasing things that I don't need is not the right approach or at least <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so that's kind of really my main triggers in January and February and generally why I would buy so much in those months. Um, I'm really relieved to say that I've managed to get through January and I've thought a lot about my mum and um, you know all of the positive impact she had on my life and you know talked to about her with my yeah yeah on the phone when we FaceTime, you know, just remembering all of the good times. But uh, it definitely has been a month where I found myself scrolling and looking at things like uh, <laughs> I spent a lot of time on the real reel, which this is something I also want to talk about. Um, but I have noticed that I have kind of leaned into that a little bit. But, um, and actually maybe we'll talk about the things that have been giving me joy. Uh, but what I've really tried to do is to replace that scrolling time with other activities. So I found I got myself out of the habit of reading. Uh, and when you've got kids, you'll probably not. It's really hard to sit down with a book. <laughs> so my husband last year for my birthday, was it the year before now? I can't recall. Uh, he bought me an Audible subscription, which has just been one of the best gifts I've ever received. And I have been listening to Shantaram, which is an incredibly long book. I think it's around 42 hours. Um, I listen at 1.2 times speed, uh, so it's not quite as long. 
but um, let me tell you who the author is. It's a true story. So it is by Gregory David Roberts. So he was uh, an Australian convict and he escaped from prison and it essentially talks about his journey uh, through India. I'm probably a quarter of the way through so far, but it is such a fascinating book. Um, I've always thought that India is such a beautiful and vibrant country, and I like the fact that he is really uh, championing that and championing the people who live there in the book as well. Uh, and hopefully one day, you know, I'd really, really love to go and visit India. I just think it'd be such a magical experience. Uh, but that has been one of the things. The other has been that I have been playing on my Nintendo Switch a lot uh, and I've really been enjoying that and it's a way for me to um, I suppose relieve stress and anxiety. Um, I am a gamer from way back. I've been playing video games since I was seven or eight I think is when mum bought me a PlayStation so a really 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 long time uh, and it's just something I really get a lot of enjoyment out of. Uh, it's a way to unwind, you're not really thinking too hard about anything serious in your life, you're just um, letting go and kind of doing something that's a little bit you know fun so that has been kind of the two main things uh, also trying to get out and walk when it hasn't been too hot it's been so muggy and humid and just roasting here in Sydney so I haven't really wanted to go out much in the middle of the day when our son is sleeping uh, which has meant that um, I've, I've really been doing a lot less exercise than I normally would um, and as you'll know um, exercise is so good for your mental health so that's something I want to try to remedy as the weather starts to cool down um, okay so let me talk you through what I purchased this month with my budget. Well, actually, maybe let's talk about the other items that I bought first. And I have made a note of them here. Um, so, what I bought this month. So, uh, some of the things that I've really been needing has been some new underwear. So, I bought myself a new bra and some undies. Uh, I actually thought that I had lost this tank bra that I have from Eveline, which I often like to wear as a crop top. Thankfully found it. I took it with me when we went to the coast and um, I couldn't find it when we got home, but it turned up it was in my husband's bag. So, uh, that I'm really thrilled I didn't lose, but I bought myself a new set because... Um, mine just really some of mine really needed replacing then I also bought some books for our son the reason why was because I was purchasing some storage tubs just as we're trying to get things organized ahead of our renovation and you needed to spend I think $65 to qualify for free shipping so I didn't want to spend $40 on shipping when I could just purchase two books and um, call it a day so I bought those for him. I also bought him a Bobo Chosers t-shirt second hand uh, which was around $20. Quite often like buying pre-loved things for him. Uh, if he's not wearing Mieta he's wearing <laughs> you know something like Bobo Chosers or the Animals Observatory. They're kind of my two favorite uh, go-to brands that are a bit more expensive. Um, then I bought some office supplies. I needed sellotape, A4 printer paper for Miere and also compostable mail bags. Uh, then I purchased some birthday presents for our nephew. He just turned one. And then also one of my very good girlfriends, her daughter is turning two. Um, oh, sorry, she turned two. So we're going to her birthday party uh, next weekend and um, I wanted to get something for her. And she actually is sharing her financial journey over on Instagram it's Patty on the money so I'm gonna link her down below if you want to go and follow her um, really really incredible saver she's got two investment properties um, she's just someone who I really admire and uh, someone who I've had a lot of conversations about investing with um, absolutely adore her and then the final thing that I bought were plates from West Elm um, I got some side plates I'll pop a photo on screen of them from the Aaron Probin collection I think it is um, a few of them had broken just because our son would have grabbed them and just knocked them off onto the ground so they needed to be replaced. So those are the things that I bought that we needed. Then in terms of how I spent my budget this month as part of my low buy, I did buy two items and shock horror, I went over budget by $10. But I'm not angry at myself about this because because of what's happening in Sydney right now, I'm really spending a lot of time at home. I'm not going out. I'm not seeing any friends. I'm spending next to nothing on recreational activities and eating out. So normally I, I do allow a small budget for those sorts of activities and I really haven't spent it. So to take $10 away from that to put towards these purchases, I'm not upset about it. 
So, first thing that I bought, um, and actually, so basically what happened was um, I received an email from Net-A-Porter saying that they had it for 80% off as part of their sale. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go on and have a look and see if the items that I had kind of bookmarked in late 2021 were included in the sale. So I've been thinking about these things for a long time. And uh, both of them were, and they were still available in my size, and they were both one of 50% off, so felt like the right time to buy. So first thing that I got was this sweater from Totem. It's a camel, really, really long uh, tunic, essentially. And it does have side slits. So sort of the way that I anticipate myself wearing this would be with slip skirts, with leggings, with jeans, worn untucked, basically. Something very slouchy and relaxed, which reflects my lifestyle. Um, and I thought that this might be a better alternative to me to the camel cashmere sweater I've got from Coz. Um, I know Totem is one of those brands that a lot of people have been purchasing from, if you follow um, influencers and content creators online. And I will say there are tons of other brands out there which are more affordable and that even have sort of nicer feeling fabrics. Like this fabric doesn't feel remarkable in any way. It is soft, but it's not as soft as other sweatshirts that I have, or sweaters that I have, should I say. Um, let me just tell you what the fabric composition is. Um, so the reason why I was drawn to it is because it's got merino in it. So it's 52% wool, uh, merino wool, 35% camel wool, and then 13% polyamide. I had kind of anticipated it would be softer because of the merino wool, but it's really cozy. I know I'm going to wear this a lot in the colder months. So while it's not, you know, 100% perfect, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, I got it in a size small. Um, then the other thing that I purchased was, and I suppose this is, this could be considered an impulse buy in a way. Um, I have been wanting a pair of the row bed sandals for a really long time, the flat ones. And I think that they are so expensive for what they are, just some very, very skinny pieces of leather um, attached to a leather sole. And I had been looking for alternatives. And I actually had on my wish list that I wanted a pair of silver sandals. And I kind of wanted the row ones in a grey, which would really satisfy that desire for a silver sandal in my wardrobe. Anyway, uh, while I was looking, I, I just did a search to see if there were any good sandals in my size. And these ones from 80 popped up. And they were very, very similar. Um, so you can kind of see they've got those same very skinny straps as the sandals from the row. And I actually thought these would be a really good alternative. And I'm very, very happy with them. Again, I got these for more than 50% off. I got my usual size and would say, yes, they fit true to size. They also come in black and, and tan, I believe, and maybe a burgundy. Um, but they're really beautiful and the quality is lovely. Uh, definitely a brand that I would be happy to explore more in the future for the their shoes and their boots which are all gorgeous but yeah those were the other purchase that I made and they really ticked off that box on my wish list so I no longer desire a pair of silver sandals that has been satisfied with these uh, I no longer desire those row bear sandals so the heel ones would be nice if I found them pre-loved uh, but yeah very very happy with these I think they're a great buy now let's move on to the gifted items now, I had two paid partnerships in January so I did receive some gifted items from those brands so the first one being Everlane and I've got three things here to show you so um, I did share this on stories this is the alpaca waffle knit polo and this is divine um, if you love their alpaca knits I just think this is a nice style something a bit different uh, I got this in two colors and I went for the medium in both sizes but I think the small also would have been fine I just like that very loose relaxed fit so I also got the snow color which is a slightly off white um, I also got this tissue weight layering top uh, and I had been looking at potentially getting a merino top in this color but I think that this kind of fills that hole that I had in my wardrobe uh, because it doesn't really get super cold during our winters here in Sydney so uh, instead of getting the kind of Arquette or Cos merino one I thought that this cotton one be much better and that one I got in a small and then I also got this super cool bomber jacket sorry one second let me grab it oh oops um, and this here it is navy wool with a black trim uh, on the 
collar here and then also on the cuffs and the hem and this is awesome it's kind of like a boyfriend style bomber um, if you want to be super oversized I'd say size up but again the quality of it is just really really nice and it is fully lined too so not something I'm going to be able to wear for a while. As you can see, there's quite a bit of knitwear, actually. <laughs> then the other brand that I worked with was Series Life. And so I was doing a post promoting their cotton poplin shirts, which are made from organic cotton, and also their Eco Vero bike shorts, which is really cool. So I've actually been wearing a lot more sort of sports slacks vibes recently and uh, it was really fun to get to work on that campaign and actually share that sort of outfit, which uh, I normally wouldn't kind of share on Instagram. I'll pop post up here. So I got the poplin shirt in the white and then also in the stripe as I wanted to promote both. Um, I did get them in a medium but I think the small also would have been fine. Again I just sized up. They are oversized and then the shorts I got in a size small but I think the extra small also would have been good. And then I did receive some gifting from Bowden as well and these were items that I picked out. It's two pairs of shoes which I selected because I felt like they would be really good affordable alternatives to designer items I already own and I wanted to test them out and then if they were then I could share them if you had been looking for something similar but at a lower price point. So the first being these tan sandals with the contrast stitching. These reminded me a lot of my Saint Laurent tribute slides but um, ever so slightly different, you know, quite inspired by, but different. Uh, these are best for narrow feet, for sure, because um, I do find they come up quite high here um, up the foot, and I have a lot of space between where my big toe ends and where the shoe ends, uh, but they do fit true to size. And then I also picked out these loafers, which the leather is really nice and soft. Um, I actually haven't had a chance to wear these because it's been too hot, but I'm hoping to wear them tail end of this week as it's raining. Um, I thought these would be a good alternative to the Gucci Jordan loafers which I have in the chocolate brown. Um, I like the chain de detail on them. Then from a beauty gifting ex perspective I actually received two unsolicited packages. I wasn't expecting either of them. So the first one was from Necessaire um, and Necessaire is definitely my favorite body care brand. Um, I really like the fact that it's a unisex brand. They have lots of unscented products as well so they launched a deodorant gel. My favorite product from them is the body oil and I literally just ran out this morning. Um, I do have other products I can use instead so I'm not going to be repurchasing that anytime soon but I'm definitely going to be sad to have that no longer uh, as part of my routine. And then a new brand launched at Mecca and I received a send out for it. It's called Tula Skin Care um, and I did, I think I might have received the full range but this is what the packaging looks like. It's really kind of fun and vibrant. And this is a clean beauty brand with a focus on probiotics and superfoods. So I'm excited to try that. Uh, that'll be nice actually because I think I need a new moisturizer to add into my vanity. So I'll probably use one of those. So those are the gifted items that I received. Um, actually, do you want to know what items I didn't buy? There were two things that I was looking at which I really, really liked and then I decided against it. The first being the Legres black lace-up combat boots. I have been trying to figure out whether combat boots are for me or not. I um, mean, I've still got a bit of time before it's winter to re or autumn to really uh, figure this out. I think I need to go try some on in person. Um, but I really liked the look of these and I thought if I was to save up two months budget that I could splurge on them. Um, they're really, really beautiful and someone whose style I really love, Neelam Ahuja on Instagram. She actually does a lot of reviews here on YouTube too, so I'll link her channel down below. She did a review on them and she was talking about how great they were and uh, definitely very much, um, I would say, inspired by her. And then also from an Australian brand perspective, Age, I really, really love their new collections and they have this dress, it's called the Romance Asymmetric Mini Dress in White. Now, I really don't need any more dresses. <laughs> I thought this was really cute, but I know these styles tend to not suit me, or at least they don't look as good on me as other, other dress styles. So I decided to also give that one a miss as well. Um, so those are the things that I I purchased um, or didn't buy. Now I did actually talk about how I was considering potentially giving myself a free pass for my birthday which is tomorrow. Um, so today's 31st of Jan so I'm a I'm an Aquarius, <laughs> age of Aquarius over here. So 
I wasn't really planning on buying myself anything. I actually bought myself the new Pokemon game on Switch and I was quite content with that. Even when my sister asked me what I wanted to get for my birthday, I had no idea. Uh, I think they were planning on getting me Pokemon, but I beat them to it because I pre-ordered it. Um, I was thinking, do I get some, uh, some makeup? But I really don't need any. Um, I'm not someone who does any sort of editorial eye looks or anything. I, I like my basics and I find because I've got an olive tone complexion it's really hard to kind of incorporate color um, on my face in that way so I realized that that was a no-go but back to the point I thought the Pokemon game was going to be the thing I bought myself for my birthday until I came across an item I have been looking for or wanting to purchase for over six years it was a really really expensive item and when I first tried it on I could have bought it with a staff discount because I worked at David Jones and it was a brand that we carried there and I kind of wish I had done that and just bought it on lay-by. Um, then I tried it on a few years later and again I didn't purchase it because it was in the lead up to Christmas and I thought this is just such a silly time of year to be buying such an expensive sweater especially living in Sydney. Um, I've now realized that was a mistake because it's no longer carried by the brand. It is this huge oversized turtleneck sweater from Celine. I'll insert the old photos of me trying it on so you can see. Um, and I just, I've been looking for it ever since. And I finally came across one in my size. And I decided that it was kind of, you know what, I'm just going to buy it and that will be my, my gift to myself. I have had money set aside for it for, for such a long time. I paid a lot less than what I would have paid if I'd purchased it retail, but it was still very expensive. It is going to be coming to me from New York, so hasn't actually shipped out. I literally just bought it uh, over the weekend, but I'm really excited about it and I think I'm, I'm glad that I gave myself that free pass to at least buy myself or treat myself to something should the opportunity arise because I think otherwise I would have been really sad to not be able to purchase that Celine knit which I've wanted for so long uh, and that's really kind of the the tough thing when you are shopping pre-loved. I know this video is going to be really long so I'm sorry but I did just want to also chat a little bit about this concept of quiet luxury which I have seen a lot of online publications refer to recently which is this idea of buying things which are incredibly basic but they are luxurious because they come from a more expensive brand. Now Neelam who I referred to earlier she shared on um, Instagram on Boxing Day that uh, that Saks were doing 50% off the row and I've been wanting to buy a, a very specific sweater from the row for months. I almost bought it full price in November and I decided against it because I thought, Do you know what, I could get the same look buying a men's cashmere sweater from Uniqlo. Um, when I saw it was 50% off, still horrendously expensive, but I said to my husband, you know, do I buy the sweater now or not? I've been wanting this for months and months. What do I do? And he said, you know what? It's very, very you. If you purchase it, you will wear it. So I ended up buying the sweater, which as I've said, it's a very, very expensive sweater. It's called the uh, Sebem or Sidem sweater. I'll show you what it looks like. This is it. It's just a super oversized black wool cashmere knit mix knit um, and yeah I, I decided to just go for it because I really like the shape the silhouette and it hangs on the body beautifully uh, it's a very unassuming if I were to put it on next to any of my other sweaters just from looking at it you probably wouldn't know that it was a luxury item there is a lot to be said for whether or not spending more money on an item is going to make it better quality or nicer than something that is much more affordable and I have consistently said over the years that I don't think that you need to spend luxury prices to get something really beautiful for your closet uh, there are a lot of brands brands and a lot of mid-priced and even affordable brands that do really lovely quality things. It's all about having an eye for it and also kind of knowing what you are looking for. And most of that really does take time and experience and just going out feeling fabrics, uh, that sort of thing. So this sweater, it is really nice. <laughs> I thought it would be softer than it was. Um, I've, I actually could have returned it but I decided to hang on to it because I knew for sure that I would wear it. Um, but it does make me feel a little bit funny about how many creators I've seen online sharing their items from the row or you know other you know Ray those really expensive brands and I sort of wonder whether they stack up to um, a lot of the other brands that I love to wear and uh, I, I will 
be able to uh, over the winter to talk about the wear and tear of this piece and whether or not it really was you know a great purchase for me but uh, I think you know Anina Bing they do the rosy sweater which is cashmere and I believe that retails for somewhere between seven hundred and nine hundred dollars so still very very expensive and definitely up there with the price of this but to me that is so much more luxurious it is so thick and heavy and it's got a very similar silhouette so probably I think I maybe should have bought that over this one um, but yeah I, I just kind of wanted to talk about that and just sort of say uh, if you are feeling this pressure or this desire to go out and spend a lot of money on something and it's really not within your budget trust me there are so many great alternatives at every single price and you really will be able to find something which stacks up just as much um, in the case of me with the Celine sweater I have been searching for years for an alternative and haven't found anything that came close so I knew personally that I was really happy to spend that money because it was an item that I had been hanging on to I'd been searching for it and I just had this uh, really indescribable desire to um, have that particular sweater. Uh, if I'd found an alternative which ticked all the boxes and was better or, the, or very very similar in terms of that bar level of quality then I think I would have let that one go from my wish list if that makes sense. That's kind of my very brief thoughts on Quiet Luxury and I'd be curious to know what you think and how you feel about that particular trend. You know, for me, I mean, I'm still going to be out here wearing my trousers from H&M and my Uniqlo knits. Like, I'm, I'm not someone who really thinks about the brand over uh, the quality of a garment. So... Um, that's just my thoughts anyway <laughs> now I think I might wrap things up here because I can already tell this is going to be a very long video I think the other things I wanted to chat about I'll save for next month and I can do sort of an additional topic every single month uh, that I touch on as part of the low buy series uh, if you were doing a low buy or a no buy I hope that yours has been going well and that you made it through the first month unscathed um, I think you always have that kind of motivation to do stuff in the first month of the year um, and February is a short month so that's also something to look forward to um, I hope that you like the format of this video if there's anything else you would like me to include or things that you would like me to exclude from future updates then please tell me down in the comment section below but thank you so much for watching and yeah, I hope that you've been enjoying all the videos that I've been sharing recently just talking a lot about how to make the most out of your current wardrobe different outfit ideas anyway I will see you on Sunday with a brand new video see you soon Bye.